Good evening. I'm Cedric Fisher, and welcome to Press Play. Happy Friday, all, and good to see you again. If you're familiar with Press Play, you know we come on, we broadcast every Friday evening with updates and issues that impact the African American community here in Central Texas. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with Press Play, you can find us at blackvideonews.com, blackvideonews.com. Blackbookstudios.org is our Facebook page. Please like our Facebook page. And you could find this particular episode of Press Play, all previous episodes of Press Play, and future episodes of Press Play on YouTube. Just toss Black Video Network, all one word, no spaces. Black Video Network, all one word, no spaces. In the search bar, I'm gonna just give you guys a quick preview here. If you can see my screen behind me, that's what it looks like when you go to YouTube to find press play. And what you'll need to do is just kind of scroll down till you find the show here. And as soon as you get there, press play. Okay, Black Video News Network, BVNN. We are going through some uh, changes right now that are upgrading and really going to be special in the future here. We've got some new programming coming down the pike. I want you guys to all look forward to that. Press Play has been, uh, we're going to do something different with it. And we're now going to add a news element to Press Play. So we will continue to feature great uh, personalities, people who are doing real significant things in the African American community. But uh, the beginning of the show, we'll talk about news. We'll hit uh, local and regional news. We'll discuss COVID health awareness, health awareness month, anything that's significant in that regard. We'll talk about black history, some historical happens, some historic happenings, and even some current things that are going on that are historic. Uh, and then we'll bring on our featured guests. So want to just kind of show you all the website, Black Video News, if you're not familiar with it, again, go to the site and um, make sure you uh, toss in your email address at some point and we'll make sure you receive this site on a regular basis. But you can, so I'm just kind of scrolling down. I want to give a, a big shout out to Mr. Fred Johnson, who is the owner of Promised Land International Foods. And that's in 78220. And this is where our, our offices and studios are located. Fred is right here in what we kind of call the village. Uh, wonderful chef, uh, extensive career in uh, being a master chef, did some time in the military, and uh, now has opened up his own restaurant with a variety of different cuisines. But I uh, want to give a big shout out to Promise Land International Foods. Again, just go to the website. You'll be able to, to take a look at uh, Mr. Fred Johnson and some of the things that he's doing. Okay, let's talk about local news. I'm going to refer right now to one of our news partners in San Antonio, and that is uh, the Rivard Report. Before we talk about health, I just want to talk about some of the information that you will find there. We also compile our own information on a regular basis here at Black Video News Network. And let me just take a half a step back and just give a big uh, applause to our team of producers and engineers and directors and videographers and writers and editors and illustrators and uh, publishers. We've got a, a multitude and, and, and a plethora of talent here that pulls this show together and is on the streets on a regular basis doing our part and as best we can to service, service the community with good information that'll keep you updated. But I wanted to mention that the Rivard Report, you can see on the screen here, has a data dashboard, data dashboard. It's a great resource to tap into on a regular basis. All things COVID you'll find on that particular dashboard, um, their site, and information that they talk about on a regular basis. I'm just kind of scroll a little bit through uh, Rivard report here. Some of the things that they they talk about. Uh, Robert Rivard, by the way, is a good friend of the the, the uh, Black Video News family. So just want to give him a plug. But let's talk about some some current um, issues that are going on that uh, are important to you. One, uh, in person jury trials have been delayed through September. 
So what that means to you, Bear County residents, is you can avoid a jury summons for at least another two months. Of course, serving the jury is a very important um, service to the community here, but uh, right now they're gonna delay these things until September while they continue to try and operate um, through COVID. Um, in addition to that, in a world seized by the pandemic and everybody's been impacted on some level, certainly here, again, when COVID made its return, San Antonio and the state of Texas in general was just, um, the spikes were just unbelievable and off the, off the charts here. But Santicos, who you guys may be familiar with, the big movie chain and uh, historic family here who is a large philanthropic family, they do a lot in, in for the nonprofit community. Uh, they're going to be releasing some new pictures, some new movies with hopes of bringing some folks in, back into the theater. They really want to, of course, make sure that um, uh, loyal guests come back. And if you haven't visited the Santicos in a while, those theaters are phenomenal. They're outstanding. They've really upgraded a lot of their uh, furnishings and uh, they've got nice cushion seats now. And they've got waiters and waitresses that'll help you and bring you your food at your table. So look forward to that. Um, want to also mention that we have a magazine here called Black Life Texas. If you're not familiar with Black Life Texas, I'm gonna pull up the uh, website here. It's a monthly magazine. We've kind of taken it bi-monthly for a while through COVID, of course, we want to um, be able to come to you on a regular basis with great information. This is our June, July edition. We call it our, our protest issue. You'll find some great footage, uh, articles, uh, photography on the entire protest of 2020. This, is, this should become a collector's edition over time and we're real uh, thrilled that we were able to get this out for you. You can find your copy at an HEB near you. And if you'd like to subscribe, we encourage that. You can go to blacklifetexas.com, get your subscription, and you'll have your own copy coming to you in your mailbox, each edition of the magazine. Okay, uh, some other newsworthy things. The XFL, you guys, you football fans out there, you know we had a football team here temporarily. And I, the, the, the league, the XFL league that hosted our football team here was impacted by COVID as well. And they ultimately had to file bankruptcy. Well, um, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, you guys are familiar with him, big movie star his ex-wife and he got together and they have now purchased the XFL. So it's good to know that uh, the XFL, the new football league is black owned and uh, look forward to some great football games coming down the pike in the future. Hopefully San Antonio will have another team and we don't know what that looks like post COVID, but and you heard me post COVID, we're believing eventually this will pass and we'll get back to some, some sim semblance of normalcy, whatever that new normal might look like. But we hope to have another sports franchise in the city here to give, uh, give us football fans something to look forward to. In addition to that, Tesla, the big car company and Space Center uh, is opening up a, a new distribution center in Austin. So we have a local Tesla dealership here in San Antonio, which is out off I-10 on your way to Bernie, but they'll now have a manufacturing and distribution plant in Austin. You guys wanna look forward to that, all you Tesla, Tesla lovers. The New York Attorney General is currently suing the National Rifle Association. That's pretty newsworthy. That's a, a bold move, but we will continue to follow that and keep you posted on that. Again, the New York Attorney New York City Attorney General is currently suing the NRA, National Rifle Association, and we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, we do want to give a special uh, condolence and, and shout out to local Judson grad and athlete Bryce Wisdom, who passed away last week 
and our prayers go to his family. And uh, if you'd like to find out some information about him, you can go to blackvideonews.com and uh, there's, there's more information for um, that situation there. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and we will come back with more information about COVID-19. Hi there, this is Terry with Frost. Good evening, this is Franklin. This is Robert with Frost. Hello, this is Rosemary with Frost Bank. One, six, or a dozen trees. No job is too big or too small. Booker's Tree Services is a certified arborist and state licensed company. On the ground or in the air, we are here to take care of all your tree needs from stump grinding, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree removal, and much more. Call the professionals to help manage your commercial or residential needs. Don't let your trees make you nervous. Call for a free estimate today at Booker Tree Service, 210-657-8085. adults has prediabetes. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. Welcome back to the Press Play. I'm your host, Cedric Fisher. Okay, let's talk about COVID-19 and before we get into that and give you some updates on the statistics, this is Health Awareness Month, and let's talk about some of the big issues that are going on right now. Um, of course, every month is Health Awareness Month, but this particular month, the month of August, is Children's Eye Health and Safety Month, Gastroparesis Awareness Month, if I pronounce that right, National Breastfeeding Month, National Immunization Awareness Month, World Breastfeeding Week, and National Health Center Week. National Health Center Week. So this, for the month of August, those particular issues are being highlighted or promoted in the health universe, in the health world. I uh, want to take you guys back to the Rivard Report real quickly here, and just let's talk about COVID and the current statistics. So these are the numbers up to the minute yesterday. We don't have current numbers for the day. We're working on ours as well. Um, so we've got 325 new cases of COVID yesterday, 325 additional cases tested positive yesterday. And that brings us to a total of 41,939 cases of COVID here in Bear County. 801 people are currently hospitalized as uh, for COVID. And that's 345 of them in intensive care. So we wanna pray for them. And of course, we definitely want to recommend and advise and encourage each and every African-American out there, anyone of color, because it's impacting the Hispanic community as well, just to be as careful and cautious as you can and make sure you follow the um, medical advisors guidelines to protect yourself and, and others. Uh, 406 people have, have passed away due to COVID. And uh, that's 12 deaths that were reported, 12 additional deaths yesterday, 12 new deaths yesterday from COVID. Again, be alarmed folks, this is no joke. And I know there is a community out there that doesn't even uh, embrace this as a, as a real virus. Be that as it may, if that's you, we understand. However, wear your mask anyway and social distance. Just do it for the next person. We at here at Black Video News Network have our own website that we have designed for COVID. And this uh, is for us and about us. 
It's blackimpactsab.org, blackimpactsab.org. If you can see the screen right behind me, this is our website for all things COVID, comprehensive site. We talk about news, we've got videos, uh, memorials, and this is part of our nonprofit effort. A lot of uh, relief and recovery information. Um, we talk about the outbreak, the impact. We've got some, some, some stats that run down the right-hand side here, blackimpactsab.org and uh, funeral services, medical referrals, uh, financial assistance, technology strategies. This, is, this has been designed by our great group of uh, engineers and uh, graphic artists here at uh, Black Video News, of Vista Products and Black Book Studios. We've got some videos here of some subject matter experts media folks on the topic of COVID. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll be able to see some of the organizations that we are affiliated with here in San Antonio, Bear County to address COVID-19. Again, this is a culturally competent, comprehensive site, all things COVID-19 for the African-American community. I want to recommend you folks all take a look at that. Okay, we're going to move from health and talk a little bit about this particular month is known as Black Business Month. Black Business Month. It's Black History, but it's Black Business Month specifically. So I'm going to click on here. August is Black Business Month. Our folks found this on Facebook, and this just um, acknowledges that August is the perfect time to both encourage and support our own. So by all means, look up African-American businesses in Bear County, Central Texas, and do our best to patronize and support each other. Uh, I mentioned earlier, here in 78220, in our unit here, we've got various businesses here, and we just recently had one of our neighbors here open up a restaurant right here at 78220 on Commerce 3363, Promise Land. If you go back to Black Video News, blackvideonews.com, front page there is a gentleman by the name of Fred Johnson, and he has opened up Promise Land International Flavors. A highly accomplished chef, extensive career in culinary um, cuisine. He can make just about anything. Fred's got great food. He's right here at 78220. I want to encourage you to stop in and and check him out. Okay, again, black to uh, back to Black Business Month here in San Antonio. Black SanAntonio.com is our comprehensive black directory website. We talk about a lot of businesses and things you can find there. That's Black SanAntonio.com. Black SanAntonio.com. Want to recommend you guys go there. And of course, we. We, uh, we support or uh, bring on all of our other mediums and things that we do. So Blacks in San Antonio also has blackimpactsab.org. But again, just want to encourage you all to scroll down and take a good look at black businesses that you can find here. This is August, we're, in, we're early in the, in the month and we wanna encourage you to get out and support our own black businesses here in town. Okay, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll have our featured guest of the day. One in three adults has prediabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Does your life matter? Education, health, and finance can determine your future and explain your past. Pick up the latest edition of Black Life Texas Magazine, a monthly outlook on life with an African-American focus. Life is what you make it, so live it in the black.
Welcome back to Press Play. I'm Cedric Fisher, your host. And as usual, Press Play is talking about issues and introducing you to special folks who impact the African-American community after the African-American experience. And uh, we're going to have a special guest on the show today, which will tell you a great deal about her life and some interesting things that have happened to her over the course of her life experience. If you're just joining Press Play for the very first time, you can find us at blackvideonews.com. Like our Facebook page, Black Book Studios, and you can find this particular episode of Press Play, all previous episodes and future episodes on YouTube at Black Video Network, all one word, no spaces, in the search bar. Black Video Network, all one word, no spaces, in the search bar. When you get there, look to your bottom right-hand corner, and of course, subscribe. We'd love to have you, and we appreciate you joining us on a regular basis for all the fine programming that's coming in from Black Video News Network. Once you scroll down, look through the shows, you can find the, today's episode, and when you get there, press play. Okay. Get ready. We have a special guest on the show today who's going to talk about uh, an incredible life she's had. And I'll just give you a little snippet. She was born white, but early in her life, in her childhood, she was adopted by an African-American family. And she didn't find out until she was 70 that all this took place. I'd like to welcome Miss. Verda Bird to the show. Welcome to Press Play, Verda. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And even though it's hot in San Antonio, it's still my home. It's a warm city. Yes. And Texas is a hot state. Yes. So we've got some questions for you here because I'm just eager to hear all your great history. But before we do, just introduce yourself to our audience. Where were you born? And my name is uh, Verda Wagner Bird. I was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1942. Um, that was 77 years ago, but uh, I've, I've lived in different places in the, in the world with my husband being uh, Air Force. We lived in Germany, we lived in Tokyo, Japan, and Phoenix, Arizona. And now we've been in San Antonio 30 years. And her husband is in the studio today, by the way. Mr. Bird is, has joined his wife. And they, I understand they, they don't go anywhere apart. Uh, they're pretty much joined at the hip after 41 years of, yes, of, yes, sir. of yes, marriage. Sir. That's fantastic. Um, so Miss Bird has a book out. I just want to show you guys this real quickly here. This is the... A book about her life, and this is 70 Years of Blackness. 70 Years of Blackness. You want to look for this. It's on Amazon. Can they find yes. the book? Okay. And yes. we're going to talk about that today. So let's get started here. Um, so briefly tell us how and when you came to learn that you were adopted and biologically born to white parents. How did that happen? The history of my life began in 1942 when I was born. I was um, born, um, my biological parents were white, but they were low income. And at that time, low income wasn't, might not be able to afford all their children. Families were very, very uh, hard to, to, families, it, it was hard to provide for some of the families for their kids. Okay. But my birth mother, Daisy Beagle, knew she could not afford to keep me as her fifth child because of the financial situation. 
So she put me in the children's welfare agency in Kansas City, Missouri. And I stayed maybe, I think, as far as I can see, about a year, year and a half. And then my, my adopted parents, they saw me and they became my foster parents for eight months and they loved me so much, they wanted to finally adopt me and give me a forever home. And they did. And I grew up in Newton, Kansas, and I graduated from Newton High School and then went on in the world about the age of 18, something like that. But in the meantime, in Newton, Kansas, it was a very small town down by Wichita, Wichita, Kansas. And it was a railroad, Santa Fe Railroad Junction, hub city for the Santa Fe Railroad in the, in the middle of the United States. Uh, and there were very few black people that lived in Newton, very few. Um, and most of the population was, I would say, 90, 95% Caucasian. So, but being that my adoptive parents were black, we went to a little black church and, and I had a little, little black, uh, two or three black friends because the high school was basically all white and the grade school was all white and the Girl Scout troop was all white. But my mother and father raised me in, with the, the guidance and the, the teachings of blackness. So after I left Newton, I became an adult. I lived in Denver, Colorado for about 12 years. And then I met my husband. He was in the Air Force then at the time. And uh, I knew him for six weeks and we got married. And here we are 41 years later. Okay. That's fantastic. So your story has been um, broadcast in national media, uh, international media. <laughs> You've been around uh, hanging out with T.D. Jakes and the likes of important folks like that. Was there ever a time during your childhood where you really questioned your race or, or, or were you ever bullied or anything about your color, your race? No, because like I said, Newton, Kansas had very few blacks to begin with. So what few blacks did live there then, they didn't question my mother and father mm. because my mother was rather a powerful black lady in Newton, Kansas. And whatever she said and whatever she did was not really questioned. Okay. And, and I was never bullied. I was never, I never had any harassment because Newton didn't do that then. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't notice it until maybe after going to Germany, you know, it became an Air Force wife. There was some then, but it really wasn't, it didn't affect me. Nothing in America. No, it, nothing in America wow. had affected me at all. Yeah. And at that time, you know, and still the military doesn't even go by race. They go by what country you're from. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They don't ask whether you're uh, from Australia or Sydney, they, well, they do, they want to know what country. They want to know what country you're from. Are you from the United States? Are you American or what? They don't go by race. Ferda, what are some of your, um, do you have any real memories and, and, and memorable experiences, pleasant or unpleasant, from growing up in that situation? I don't have any unpleasant memories at all. I really don't because the color of my skin maybe, well I know it was a lot lighter when I was younger, <laughs> but I never had any experiences. I never had any bad experiences. I really never did. 
uh, until after mm, I married my husband, we went to his hometown one time in Florida, and Denny's had just, uh, <laughs> Denny's was in the midst of a segregation suit or something. Yeah. And they had discriminated right. about with some FBI agents or something. Mm -hmm. And we went in, people uh, were being seated before us. And I, and I knew that wasn't right. So they asked for our, our IDs, and when we showed them our military ID, they said, oh, okay, but you can't drive that rent a car away from here. <laughs> so. You know, they prevented us from driving or rent a car. We had to call his dad to get back home. And it was a big mess. But they did give us a small settlement. And okay. that's the only thing I really have noticed. So you were part of that big suit that Denny's had, that lawsuit. We got a few, okay. few little dollars. <laughs> okay, nice. Do, mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel like there was anything you missed not being a member of a white family growing up? I've thought about that quite a bit. But I, I can't actually say I missed anything okay. because I don't know of anything I missed. Okay. Now, only so, thing I really might could say, I miss going to a white church. <laughs> I miss going to the white beauty parlor. <laughs> but I don't want to do that anyway. <laughs> you know, because I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't going to go by myself and I wasn't going to go, you know, being the feeling awkward and and I just never went I didn't go and I didn't want to go and I still don't want to go okay do you have other siblings by the way no so you were the only child in the house yes at the time okay. yes I, I grew up an only child okay. with uh, Ray and Edwina Wagner in Newton Kansas yes I was the only child she wasn't able to have children and I have that documented too, uh, where she can't have it. She couldn't have children because of her physical condition. Okay. But they loved me, so she wanted me. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah. So with your newfound reality, and, and it was 70, I hate to ask a woman her age, but <laughs> how old are you now? I'm 77. 77. Yeah. So this was all discovered seven years ago. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, not quite so, but I was in two, so three, so four, so five, so six, five years ago. Let's say five years five ago. Five years ago. And I was in my early, early 70s mm -hmm. when I got my original birth certificate from Kansas City, you know, and I have lived all these years with, with an amended, falsified birth certificate. You know, it was, so I have two, I have two birth certificates. Two birth certificates. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. You, can, you can find them in the book, too. The book is really extensive. I mean, it's got a lot of great information in it. So with your, in your newfound reality, if you could, would you go back and change anything about the way you were raised? No, I would not change a thing because the Lord has blessed me so well and I was guided and taught so well by my adopted mom and dad, I wouldn't change anything. <laughs> unless. Unless, you know, I become a millionaire or something like that. Okay. But that might not even make me happy either. Yeah. Because I've enjoyed my life. How about your uh, adoptive parents? Do you feel, is there any kind of emotion, good or bad, or that they didn't say something? Or how do you feel about them? You know, I've been asked that question many times. There is no, I'm not mad at mm. them for not telling me. I'm not mad at Edwin and Wagner for not telling me I was born of white parents. I'm not mad at Daisy and Earl Beagle uh, for giving me up for adoption or, or signing it. I'm not mad at anyone because Daisy and Earl Beagle, biological parents, knew that they could not afford to keep me financially. So she, out of love, gave me out, up for adoption. And then the Wagners, out of love, guided, guided me and taught me the things that I know today. Okay. No, I'm not mad at nobody. It's a good attitude. Yeah. We're going to take a break. We're here with Miss Verna Bird.
born white, adopted black, and at the age of 70, discovered her reality. We'll be right back with Unpressed. One, six, or a dozen trees. No job is too big or too small. Booker's Tree Services is a certified arborist and state licensed company. On the ground or in the air, we are here to take care of all your tree needs from stump grinding, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree removal, and much more. Call the professionals to help manage your commercial or residential needs. Don't let your trees make you nervous. Call for a free estimate today at Booker Tree Service, 210-657-8085. three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber, breathe right into your foot, your plumber's masseuse, yes. you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Does your life matter? Education, health, and finance can determine your future and explain your past. Pick up the latest edition of Black Life Texas Magazine, a monthly outlook on life with an African-American focus. Life is what you make it, so live it in the black. Welcome back to Press Play. I'm Cedric Fisher, your host, and today we have a special guest. Our guest in the studio was born white and adopted by an African-American family. Didn't discover until she was 70 years old that this was her experience and her background. Her name is Verda Bird, and welcome back to Press Play, Verda. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to, to be part of this production. We're, we're happy to have you. Let me ask you this question. Um, talking about the current state of race relations and in America here, how do you feel about the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement? At the present time, I think is very, very, very important because Black lives do matter. And whether we're a male or female, black history is, is very important. And it tells that our black lives do matter now more than ever. Um, we, we need to protest. Yes, we do. And I, and I think the protesting is an excellent tool to show that we are black, that our black lives do matter. But we have to protest, um, that they have to be nonviolent. Okay. Nonviolent protest sure. is what MLK, uh, the black, uh, John Lewis just died. Mm-hmm. Yes. They all they all had protested. Yes, they did. Right. But they they were nonviolent protests. You know, I, I I think that black history should even be taught in all schools, not just black schools, mm-hmm. because we have the Tuskegee Airmen, we have the Buffalo Soldiers, we have we have black heroes that sometimes are overlooked and forgotten, but they were not violent. Okay. They were, they were, they did what they did, but they were not violent. And we, we shouldn't be violent in any protest. Got to do it the nonviolent way. Yeah. Okay. 
Black history is American history, isn't it? Yes. Right. So, and we all why, are human. That's why it's important. We're human beings. We're not just black race, white race, Chinese. We're all human. Right. No doubt. Let's talk again about your um, life as a white person growing up in an African American family. So, when you finally got the revelation of your origin and how you were raised and came up how did let's just talk about mr bird for example how did mr bird your husband cousins other family Daughter. members take it how did they handle it basically uh my husband he he accepted it he really did because he knew that this documentation that i had received came from the right places. It came from the adoption agency. It was, wasn't just made up. Okay. So, so they weren't fake. <laughs> they were origin, copies of the original document. He took it pretty good. He really did. Mm -hmm. But I think he was kind of in shock like I was. Okay. Yeah, shocked <laughs> him a little bit. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> His family, uh, they took it, they, you know, everybody, Kind of, okay, okay, if mm. that's what it says, okay. <laughs> mm, okay. And so my birth mother and father, they were already deceased. My adopted mom and daddy, they're already deceased. I didn't have any brothers and sisters growing up. Mm -hmm. And I had one daughter and she thought it was funny. Okay. <laughs> she thought, oh, she said, well, mama, my mother raised her. So her grandmother told her, well, your, your mama's white. Had to, already told her. <clears throat> but mom, and I told her, I said, well, mama failed to tell me. She said, I thought you knew. <clears throat> no, I didn't know. Okay. So she she already knew, so it was no big thing to her. And Very still interesting. <laughs> Do you have any advice for other folks who have been raised in a situation like you and discovered later in life, what would you, how would you advise them? What would you say to them? The, first of all, I don't think it's a good idea for anybody in their senior years to find who they were to begin with. Mm -hmm. Because you, like me, I lived 70 years of blackness and I didn't know who I was. So transracial and biracial adoptions, the parents should tell and teach their children as, as soon as they as can. As soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Because okay. uh, children, yes, they, they have ages that they understand stuff. And if you have to tell them over and over to mm -hmm. every year bring it up or review uh, their memory, they need to know that. They need to know their roots. And then you can tell them that you love them enough, but they have to know why we adopted you. We, we have to tell you why you're so special in our life. Mm, okay. and, and share with them the history of their culture, whatever it might be. But wait, make sure you wait till they're old enough to understand. Because if they don't know, that causes bullying. Hmm. That causes other kids to say, you don't look like me. You're, hmm. you're this, you're that. You're mama this, you're daddy that. Well, kids don't like that. And kids can be mean to other kids. And if they don't know why they're being picked on or talked about, well, then that makes them feel worse. So the, the parents should tell their children as soon as they can. Okay. And that way they can have two cultures. They can understand as they, day by day, year by year, what, what's going on. Great advice. Let's talk about, um, I'm gonna ask you this question, and this is a question we get privileged to be featured with and guest and host folks, guests just like you on a regular basis. <laughs> One of the things I've learned about all the special, unique individuals on this side of heaven, uh, particularly if they're leaders or established, accomplished uh, folks like yourself, they all have a book 
one book, maybe a couple books that they refer to on a regular basis. Now, it could be they only pick that book up occasionally, maybe even once every other year or once a month or once a week or daily. They refer back to the book, their particular go-to book. That book is typically found on their nightstand, Verna. Mm -hmm. What book is on your nightstand? Well, there's two. I had two mamas, two daddies, so I have to have two everything. Okay. Except husband, I only have one husband. <laughs> but there's two. The first of all is the Bible. The Bible, okay. Because the Bible teaches us whether we forget sometime, treat others the way you want to be treated. And the Lord answers prayers. And if you make mistakes, or, you know, say, look, ask him to forgive you because he's a forgiving God. And if we make bad choices, ask him that, Lord, let me learn from my mistakes. So that's number one. Okay. So the Bible's one. Yeah. And the number second Number two book. is my 70 Years of Blackness, my own book. Okay. Where, you know, I said, thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. that, I, that you brought me this far. And I'm able to verbally tell my story. I can have pictures to go along with it. And hopefully someone will be helped and blessed by 70 years of blackness. By the book. Okay. Great answer. I like that. That's two good books, by the way. So let's, let's talk about your, your upcoming projects. You currently, you've, you've got your book out, and this can be found on Amazon, right? Yes. Amazon.com. Now, I understand you're working on a short film or a documentary. And is that up and out? And... You've already won a couple film festivals, and yeah. tell us about that. The um, book was published about mm, two years, two and a half years ago, and I went to a film festival up in Houston to publish, to push my book, but I wasn't able to to uh, sell books at the festival because it wasn't a book selling festival but there were photographers there that took pictures of authors with the book with their books and so a photographer took my picture on the red carpet holding my book and he said okay thank you very much here's my card <laughs> so i said okay thank you so about two months later, I called the, the photographer and uh, he happened to live in Jackson, Mississippi. I thought, oh my goodness, how is he gonna send me these pictures that he took of me that I'm requesting to receive? He told me, he said, well, Miss Bird, I gave him to my friend. Well, what's your friend's name? And he said, well, I gave him to, the, to uh, uh, my friend who's the artist and he is Christopher Winfield and he's got the pictures. I said, man, can I have his, his phone number? I called Christopher and I told him who I was and, he, and I asked him, I said, would you be interested because he's an independent filmmaker and I said, would you be interested in doing a documentary on me and my story? He said, well, let me think about it. You know, I'm, what, let me see what I have going now and, and I'll get back with you. So he didn't get back with me soon enough. I called him again. I said, look, my story is very important to me. Even though it's historical, it's still about adoption. And we need to, I, you need to help me get it out to the public about adoption, transracial, biracial, you know, it, it, it's now we have rules that we didn't have rules. We, we couldn't go by with my adoption, but now we could, we, you know, adoption agencies are quite different now. He said, so, yes, Miss Bird, he said, I'm gonna love, I'll uh, do it for you. I said, oh, okay. I said, but how are we gonna feel? You're in Jackson, Mississippi, and I'm in San Antonio, Texas. He said, okay, well, can you come here? My husband, 
Joe Nita Jackson, Mississippi, and we started filming at the Carver Library in Jackson, Mississippi about two years ago, and that's how it all started. Okay, and it's been released, it's completed. It's been, and it's been completed in November last year, it was no, completed. Yeah. And now it's in about 30 film festivals across the United States and internationally because I've just won the a People's Choice Award in the African Film Festival, along with some other film festivals and awards. And this week, I was accept well, last week I was accepted into the San Antonio Film Festival, which is going on virtually now. That's outstanding. Congratulations for you. Thank you. Um, one last question before we sign off. You're talking to a viewing audience of potentially half million African Americans and others who sort of pay attention to uh, what's going on in the African American community. How can we help you? How can our viewers help you? And, and how can they find you? You can find me on uh, uh, Facebook. You can find me on YouTube under Bird of Bird. You can find me uh, um, on Amazon. The book is on Amazon. Uh, the book okay. is on Amazon. And as far as the San Antonio community helping me, the only thing I can truly say now is to love your children. Whether they're right or wrong, or whether they're bad or good, as long as you are a parent, a mother, mother, loving mother, a, a dad, whoever you are, if you have children, love your children. Teach them the best, best you can. Guide them in the right direction the best you can. Yes, they make mistakes. Yes, they make bad choices. But you still have to love your children. In my case, I like to say it was five layers, not levels, but layers of love. Because birth mother Daisy, birth father uh, Earl, adopted mama Edwina, adopted daddy Ray, and me. There's five people. And we all loved each other in a different way. Children love their parents their own way. Parents love their children. Daddy loves his boy better than his girl, or daddy loves his girl better than his boy. That, that, that shouldn't matter. As, as parents love your children is all I really ask. Outstanding. What's the name of the documentary, by the way? 70 Years of Blackness. 70 Years of Blackness, the <laughs> autobiography of Miss Verda Bird. Get your copy on Amazon.com. Verda, thank you for coming to the show this evening. We'll bring you back at another time because you've got a wealth and plethora of information that's very interesting and, and quite intriguing and entertaining. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This has been another fine episode of Press Play. I'm Cedric Fisher. We'll look forward to seeing you back here next week, same time. Good night. <laughs>